Hello, Kevin from 2D House. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello, Kevin from 2D House. I'm trying to be professional. Hello, <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Hello, it's Kevin from 2D House here, and today we're reviewing the new Nikon 1 series. We have the J1 in white over here and the V1 in black. We're gonna break it down and give you a hands on review, and after we take some photos and videos, we're gonna let you know what we think. These cameras are really similar in their specs. They both share a 10.1 megapixel sensor. The sensor size is 13.2 millimeters by 8.8 .8 millimeters. That's good for about a 2.7 crop factor in comparison to a 35 millimeter sensor. Both these cameras come with the same kit lens. It's a 10 to 30 millimeter, which is the 35 equivalent to a 27 to 81 millimeter lens. They have a really impressive 73 point autofocus system that Nikon claims to this date is the most autofocus points on any interchangeable lens camera. They have expanded ISOs at 6400 and they both shoot raw. When I was testing out the J1, I actually got stopped by a lot of people asking what the camera was because they thought it looked really, really good. So Nikon gets really big points on style. And that's about where all the similarities end. So you must be wondering where the $250 price difference comes. First is the physical size. You can see that the V1 is actually quite larger and a bit heavier. It has an electronic viewfinder and it doesn't actually come with a flash. Instead, it has a little accessory port where you can add on your own flash here. And the J1 has a built-in pop-up flash, which looks pretty cool. Although the screen sizes are both three inch, the J1 has 460,000 dots, while the V1 has 921,000 dots. The flash mount on the V1 actually doubles as an accessory mount, and you can add on a, a wide variety of attachments. Although this V1 has 921,000 dots on the rear LCD screen, this viewfinder has 1.4 million dots, and it's activated by a proximity sensor in the back. Another difference is that the V1 has a 3.5mm stereo input, so it's a big bonus for anyone who's looking to make some movies out there. Lastly, a major difference between these cameras is that they share two different batteries. We were quite disappointed with the J1 battery, but the V1 battery shares the same battery as the Nikon D7000, which is an ENEL15. Although these numbers sound really impressive, we feel some of these numbers are inflated and misleading. For example, Nikon claims this camera shoots up to 60 frames per second. With a buffer of about 12 images, that only allows you to shoot for a small fraction of a second. Also, the 1200 frame per second slow motion movie mode sounds impressive as well, but at a resolution of 320 by 120, that makes for pretty much unusable video footage. These cameras have four modes on the dial. They're still, video, smart photo selector, and motion snapshot. We feel that the last two modes are actually pretty gimmicky and we can do without them. For example, Smart Photo Selector takes 20 photos in burst mode, chooses the five best photos based on smiles, eyes open, but we feel like sometimes eyes closed is actually part of the moment. The last part, the motion snapshot, it takes a one second slow-mo video followed by a still, and we just don't see a point to it. With a dedicated record button for video and still shutter button, we feel the dial can actually be thrown out completely. That would also make the menu more streamlined, having one menu rather than a separate menu for each feature. One of the major flaws in these cameras is the LCD screen. When you're shooting in manual mode, the screen doesn't actually reflect your exposure settings. Another silly thing about this camera is the battery door. After inserting your battery, you actually have to close the door and then switch a latch on, which seems kind of cumbersome. It's just a lot more work than it should be. One feature we do love on this camera is the 400 frame per second slow motion movie mode. Although it's not high resolution at 640 by 240, it's still really fun. And let's be honest, everything looks amazing in slow motion. Here's some footage we shot at the park. We're really happy with the video quality on these cameras. They both shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second and 720p at 60 frames per second. The autofocus is really good for a stills camera as well. And as you can see from the footage, rolling shutter issues are minimal. Here are some more examples of the 400 frame per second slow motion. To sum it up, we actually really like these cameras, but at 650 and 900 Canadian, we feel they're overpriced. At 650, you can get an entry level DSLR, and for cheaper, you can get a micro four thirds camera that has a bigger sensor. Although we like the style, picture, and video quality, we can't justify the price point. If we were a little bit cheaper, we would actually enjoy owning these cameras. In the future, we'd like to see a more competitive price point and more robust features. So that's what we think of the Nikon 1 series. Thanks for watching. Hmm. Oh. 
For similar prices, you can get an entry-level DSLR, or for... Uh, blah, 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 that was awkward. Who? No, oh, this is so hard. I don't like this at all. I suck at it. <laughs> I know! I know what I'm doing wrong. I can't fix it. Although we like the... Although we... Although we like the... Uh, we're actually not mind owning it. Oh no, where am I going with that? Oh, I said it again. I need a script for, like on your face. I don't know what to do! Shit. It's so weird! Thanks for watching. No. <laughs> I knew it! I had nothing, I had nowhere to go. <laughs> I have nowhere to go after that. Where do I go? <laughs> Give me something. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>